Let's go down to Rome's. Your Minnesota Fighting Vikings are indeed 4-0, playing like the best team in the National Football League. And also, every single Sunday, it's been someone else stepping up, and it's been flexing the depth of this team. Guys like Patrick Jones second, Jalen Speedy Naylor catching three touchdowns. You know, muff pun aside. Yeah, and it's really awesome to see different guys making plays. Now, of course, this squad is chock full of superstars, but it's the meat and potato foundational guys that have just really been getting things done. So wanted to shout out five unsung, uh, unsung Vikings. And, you know, b- beyond the usual, you know, like Patrick Jones second having five sacks, Naylor with three touchdowns, CJ Ham doing CJ Ham things, so, some guys that don't get their due, uh, but we're going to shout them out. So first off is Josh Oliver. Now, you know, people got upset. Three years, $21 million for a blocking tight end. Yes. Yes. One of the big reasons why the Vikings have been so physical in the trenches on offense is Josh Oliver, where you know, we said he's basically a six, six offensive lineman. He is huge. Uh, he, frankly, is he the largest tight end in, in the NFL? He might be. But also, uh, he's been a great factor in the passing game intermittently. Four catches for 37 yards, caught that touchdown against Green Bay uh, on five targets. And uh, he's had 92 blocking snaps. He's been great uh, in the run game. He's been great uh, on the 11 snaps that he's been pass protecting as well when they go max protect. And Oliver is a very valuable part of this football team. He's looking really damn good so far. Uh, Next up, number two, so Shaq Griffin. Now, Shaq Griffin... Basically, this offseason was people pissing him on. It's like, oh, did you know that the chart says that he cost the Vikings a compensatory pick? Don't care. D- do not care. And also, it's been sort of out of sight, out of mind, because he pulled that hamstring second day of training camp, uh, and then was just like, oh, we didn't really see him uh, in the in the ramp up to the season. But out on the field in the regular season, he's been fantastic, man. Now, it's been highlighted by the interception that he had against the Packers, but he's quietly been playing phenomenal football. He's uh, only allowing a 53.3 quarterback rating when thrown at, which is which is good. It's number nine in the league amongst qualifying cornerbacks. Uh, he, he's got that pick. He has four passes broken up, 10 tackles, seven solo, uh, and he's only allowed eight catches for 69 yards. Nice on 17 targets. And you know, everyone else gets more hype. I mean, Murphy... Murphy gets attention both for good and bad things. Uh, and then Gilly, of course, is Stefan freaking Gilmore. But Shaq Griffin has quietly had uh, himself a phenomenal season. And it, it sort of goes against the grain because you brought in Shaq and and Gilmore to play press man, but the Vikings have still played a lot of zone. Now, I think part of that has been a matchup dependent, but the Vikings, if they want to go press man across the board, they certainly can do such things, right? But Shaq Griffin uh, has been playing phenomenally so far this season. Next up, number three, tough to handle Blake Brandle. That's right, baby. So, I mean, there's some question marks where the Vikings coaching staff, notably offensive line coach Chris Cooper, really went to bat for Blake Brandle, who's been a career backup, former six-round pick uh, in 2020 out of Oregon State. Left tackle kicked inside to guard, but giving him that three-year, $9 million plus deal, he's earned it, and he's looked like – a stabilizing force at that left guard spot. Now, Reisner last year was great at pass blocking, and Brandle has been great all the way around. He's got a 71.9 PFF pass blocking grade, six best in the league amongst left guards. Uh, he's only allowed three pressures. Did allow a sack, but you know, that, that was sort of that weird Quay Walker stunt, so you know, it, it is what it is. But uh, his communication on the left side with Derrissaw and Bradbury has been solid, uh, especially he and Derrissaw. They've been really good at picking up twists, stunts, and games. And overall, like he's been really fantastic. And a lot of the Vikings' run game success has been on that left side with Brandle and Derrissaw. So I, I do think that Blake Brandle has been phenomenal. Has had four penalties so far this season, so some to clean up. But, I mean, he... In terms of like choices that the Vikings have made, like Brandle is, has certainly been phenomenal. Next up, number four, Hadi Ward. Now, this is going to be controversial because Jihad, he has zero tackles on the season, which seems impossible for the amount that he's played because he's actually played 114 of the 283 defensive snaps for the Vikings, roughly about 40%. But it's his versatility, which is key. So remember in preseason, he was uh, you know second team outside linebacker, but he's been playing all along the defensive line. His versatility, he could, basically, he could probably play every single spot in the front seven. I mean, he could probably play him at off ball uh, if he really need to. But, you know, Flores and the players have talked about Ward's just like his aura. Like, like he, he's a character. He's funny. He keeps the vibes great. And also he gets after things. Like, did you know that he's second on the team behind Grenard in pressures with 12? Uh, you would not expect that 
you know, because on the broadcast, like they haven't been calling, you know, 52's number up because he literally has zero tackles, but he's been wreaking havoc and he's been moving the quarterback off the spot. Also, he leads the team with six quarterback hits. So he's getting it like, so pressures are, are like plate appearances, right? Uh, eventually you're, you're going to, you go to make contact. Eventually you're going to get home and get a couple sacks. So I I'm expecting like, there's going to be a Jihad Ward two and a half sack game uh, at some point uh, this season, because he's consistently getting into the quarterback. He's consistently moving him off the spot and sometimes in the arms of his fellow defenders, but he really is uh, a key piece on this defense. You know, love me some Hottie Ward. Lastly, Jonathan Bullard. So, Bullard is like your old school 3-4 defensive end, and he absorbs bodies. He stops the run, and on third down, especially third and medium, third and forever, he's off the field, right? So he's only played 122 of the Vikings, 283 snaps. He's an early down player, but he's got he's got a great anchor. Uh, he's great against the run, 10 tackles, four tackles for loss, a 76 PFF run defense grade, and he really is a, a tone setter out there because he got 90 Difficult to move, difficult to run on his side, and also he'll do the dirty work. He'll absorb blockers. He'll take them on, make sure that the linebackers, nailed it, uh, can scrape and make tackles. And it's the unsung guys like Bullard, the guys who do the dirty work, the guys that don't seek glory, uh, the guys that are frankly unappreciated by a lot of fans, Like that makes a team. Like Bullard taking on multiple blockers allows Cashman to make tackles, allows Pace or Kamu or uh, AAVG Grenard to make tackles. And I I love and adore like hardworking, hard hat, meat and potato players like uh, like Jonathan Buller, like Hottie Ward and Blake Brandle doing the damn thing, getting things done. Shaq Griffin uh, just toiling away. Like, d- does he get all the headlines? No. I-, I love that he had that pick, though, off that, the ricochet from Dubs. So I honestly think that this team – has a chance to be very special. Of course, you got the superstars, uh, th- then you got the glue guys, and now you got the foundational guys, and glad to show a little love to the unsung heroes uh, of the Vikings uh, so far this season. But your thoughts are thoughts. Uh, let us know, comment section. Yeah, 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 what to do. Skull, production value.